had it not been for the campaign, who knows where I'd be now. Um, this could be a very different story. Had it not been that I turned the telly on that day and saw the sticker. I'm Lee, I'm 34 and I was diagnosed with stage 3 ER positive breast cancer on the 14th of October 2019. This is my change and check story. I had a lump previously, which a few years back I got checked out, um, got told it's nothing to worry about, nothing serious, um, so yeah, carried on, and then a couple of years later I started to get a shooting pain through it, um, really strange, didn't really know what it was, just kind of, as you do, carried on and just thought, oh, it'll be fine, nothing to worry about, however, I was sitting on the sofa and um, saw the campaign, saw the sticker, we are launching our Change and Check campaign to get women all over the UK checking themselves for the signs and symptoms of breast cancer. From today, these fantastic reminder stickers are going to be showing what to look for and they're going to be in thousands of changing rooms all across the country. And one of the symptoms was obviously the shooting pain, uh, unexpected pain. And at that moment, it just kind of spoke to me and just made me go, I need to get this rechecked back out. Went to the hospital, went in, they started doing an ultrasound. And I don't know, just that moment, I just kind of, the minute that they started, I just kind of got a knot in my stomach and just knew. I then had to wait a week um, for the results. And I think for me, I think that week has been the hardest week um, in all of this, it was it's it was the unknown. It was not knowing um, what your fate was really. Um, it felt like the longest week ever, sitting in the waiting room, um, waiting to find out your fate was so hard. Um, for me, my mum. Um, died of breast cancer when she was my age, 34, and um, I know how hard that was for her to leave us, um, me and my sisters. The idea of me having to leave my boys in the same fate um, and the same way was um, extremely hard. And I remember sitting there thinking, please just say it's curable, please just say it's curable. I knew, I just kind of knew, I think you just get like a gut instinct. I knew it was cancer, just wanted it to be curable. Um, and that was the first thing that I said to the doctor as I walked in, is it curable? <laughs> and um, yeah, I got sat down, told that it was um, breast cancer, telling um, family that obviously the diagnosis and stuff, that was definitely really difficult. Um, and telling the boys, um, sitting down with my oldest and speaking to him because he was at an age that he fully understood um, what was going on and stuff. Um, that was difficult, really difficult. Um, and when you're trying to reassure someone and at the same time being really unsure yourself um, of exactly what was to come, however, Oh, both my boys were absolutely fantastic and have been through this whole process. They really are. They are my absolute world. I searched everywhere for information. I struggled to find anyone that was kind of around my age as well. So I decided to turn to Instagram. Um, I started my Instagram page just to try and, if someone was in my position and was looking for some form of information, to try and help, basically. Um, and also from that, I have found a massive sort of community of people that actually are around my age and are going through it, unfortunately. I don't want someone being scared, someone, you know, petrified of what was to come. So I wanted to write about my story and how it's affected me and actually just still living, living with breast cancer and not writing off that year because I did get told to write off a year when obviously I was diagnosed. Um, and for me, I never wanted to do that. I don't want to stop living. I wanted to carry on. I was going to be operated on in, um, it's like the sister, the sister um, hospital, basically because it had an intensive care, uh, just for the fact of obviously everything else. I also then got put on regular blood exchanges um, just to try and keep me as healthy as possible. For me, it wasn't quite as straightforward as going straight in and obviously having a lumpectomy and getting it done. Being under the age of 40, um, 
there had to be more tests done. I had to have a breast MRI because obviously your breast tissue is really thick and dense um, when you're under 40. So obviously imaging and stuff is not necessarily so clear with a, um, with, with a mammogram. So obviously there was different tests that I had to do. As well as, I've also got an illness, um, I've got sickle cell disease, um, which basically is a blood disorder and it causes extreme pain. Um, so with the complications of that, I wasn't as straightforward as sort of booking me in for a surgery and going for it. I was really calm actually going back for the results. I don't know if I was a little bit naive or I don't really know to be honest. The cancer was actually bigger than they had first originally thought. Um, and unfortunately they didn't get clear margins on two of the areas. So I was told that I would have to have more surgery. Um, I also got told that obviously the type of cancer that I'd found was invasive and um, they also found it in one of the lymph nodes out of three that they took. So I um, was told basically to write off the next year um, because I was going to have to start chemotherapy. Do you know what? It was something that all I associated with was losing your hair. And to be honest, it was the only side effect that I was worried about. When you look at someone that's got no hair, just straight away you think, oh, they've got cancer. And up until now, I could still go and do the school run and knew, no one knew what was going on in my world and stuff, you know? I, did, I didn't want that. So the idea of losing my hair was horrendous for me. Um, however, I plan to use scalp. Um, call him first chemo. Yeah, the first one was definitely the worst one. It was just, I know it was definitely because of the unknown and just watching the drug go in. The um, it was red. The first chemo that I had. So um, I had 16 rounds of chemo altogether. However, the first four were red. Um, and watching that go in and just thinking, is this it? Is this how am I going to be? How am I? How how's this going to make me feel? A couple of chemo's in, I actually had to have a port cath fitted, which is obviously in your chest, um, just because my veins were shocking. Um, with obviously the sickle and um, yeah, years and years of obviously lots of needles and stuff, as well as obviously having chemo. Chemo obviously damages your veins. For me, I associate being ill with pain to do with the sickle. Um, however, it was the fatigue that got me. Um, and it was only for a few days each month, uh, each cycle, sorry. Um, it was it was really difficult. I, I basically underestimated that. Um, just getting up and doing the most basic of things like emptying the dishwasher. And I remember just laying on the sofa and thinking, move Lee, move, like, come on, you can do this. So at the end of um, 16 rounds of chemo, I then had to have more surgery done. Um, went in again, if it was put in place. Um, and yeah, had, had second surgery, which was really straightforward. I was actually out of hospital by, I think about two o'clock in the afternoon. Uh, got picked up by my husband. Two weeks later, I went back for the results and unfortunately they did still find more cancer. Um, however, they did get clear margins. So at least then I was told that actually I could move on to radiotherapy. So um, that is what I'm now currently doing. Radiotherapy for me so far has been a breeze. It really has. Um, compared to chemo or anything else, um, radiotherapy for, yeah, has been easy, it really has. Um, yeah, you just lay in a machine and it does its thing. No needles involved, which is always a bonus. Um, and yeah, so far so good. Um, I put cream on regularly, which obviously I've been told to do. And yeah, I can't wait to finish it if I'm perfectly honest. Um, yeah, just it will be strange actually to finish treatment and actually get to the end of it. It's gonna be a very strange moment. So for me, the thing that I am most worried about, I think, which most people are, is reoccurrence. Um, I know too well, unfortunately, uh, that obviously that can happen and the devastating effects that that can have on a family. For anyone that's just about to embark on this crazy journey, ride, I don't know, whatever you want to call it, um, you're going to be okay. You really are. Um, you know, you find strength from somewhere that you didn't even know that you had. Um, however, you find it and you get through it because you have to. Had it not been for the campaign, who knows where I'd be now. Um, this could be a very different story. Had it not been that I turned the telly on that day and saw the sticker, which obviously had 
uh, my symptom on it um, and I went and got checked out who knows where I could have been so thank you thank you so much I owe you guys everything and Helen you are an absolute superstar um, yeah banging on all the time about checking your boobs but it's so so important know your norm and yeah always get everything checked out in the future um, for me I need to finish radiotherapy and then obviously go on to the other drugs that will put me into a menopausal state um, and then I plan to get back to work and live basically um, for me life's about living I want to make the most of it I want to get back out there, I want to have fun and make lots of lovely memories um, with my boys and with my family and friends. 